Sukuigar. Hello. This is lesson two of the video series trying to teach you the Mandalorian language, also known as Mandoa. In this lesson, we're going to cover the basics of grammar so you can understand how words and phrases work. We'll go much deeper into grammar in later videos, like both solid grammar and theoretical grammar, but for now, just the basics. In Mandoa, grammar is fairly simple because it's designed to be learned by people from all ages because the Mandalorians can adopt adults into their culture. The language has no cases. There are only two forms of verbs, the infinitive and the regular. There's a simple affix system for tense and some other things. However, tense is usually not all that necessary. There's also a system to easily create compound words. Sometimes affixes can only be that, affixes. But sometimes they're also their own word, which can make it kind of ambiguous as to whether or not something is a compound word or it's just an affixed word. Again, we'll go more in depth into grammar in later videos. Let's start with nouns. The nouns are very basic. You start with a root. That word has a meaning. It's, it's the noun. It could be a specific event or an overall idea. Now from your root, you add your affixes. Among your prefixes, you have things for your tense and whether something is a command or not, questions, things like that. Ru or r is a past tense prefix and indicates that a word has something to do with the past, either being placed in it or referencing it. If it's attached to a noun, then it means that noun has something to do with the past. If it's attached to a verb, then it means that action was done in the past. And you use R apostrophe if the prefix is attached to a root that starts with a vowel. For example, ni repa, which means I ate. Epa means eat. If you add the R apostrophe, since epa starts with an E, you have repa, which means ate in past tense. Ven is the same except for the future tense. So you have, for example, ni ven epa, which means I will eat. Ven epa, meaning eat in the future. Tense is usually implied, and so this isn't all that necessary. However, sometimes you do need to say it, or you need to use it in a compound word. So that's why I'm saying it. But most of the time, you'll imply tense and not actually specify. Ori is the word for big. However, it can be used in a prefix, meaning a big version of something or an important version of something, which is an augmentative. For example, ori vod means big brother. Ori, big, vod, brother. But ori wadasla means very valuable. Ori being big or very, and wadasla being valuable, it makes it ori wadasla, very valuable. Dar means either temporary or is no longer something. So you attach dar to your root, and that means you're no longer that something. So for example, darmanda means you are no longer a Mandalorian. So be or b indicates possession. It can be used as a prefix, and technically it can be used as a suffix. Sometimes the possessor and the possessed are combined into one compound word, dropping the be altogether. B is used before the vowel, like always. For example, we have Buishe Bajengo, the helmet of Django. Or we could combine it, Django Buishe, Django's helmet. And now there is also a very, very rare, and I've never seen it before in like actual use, except for in poetry and theoretical stuff. But you can just have a B and add it on to the end, which is a suffix. So, for example, how you would say that would be buisha jengob, but no one uses that, so just don't use it unless you want to be creative. K, or k, before a vowel, indicates command. It's placed at the beginning of the sentence, and the verb is usually attached to it, and not the subject, because that would just look weird, and usually the subject is implied. For example, kepa means eat. The u, the gar, is implied, so you don't have to say it here. Nu ne and n before a vowel indicates a negative word or statement. It can go at the beginning of the sentence or attached to a specific word you wish to make negative. Nu and ne are interchangeable. It's all about what you prefer to say and how you pronounce it. 
So, for example, you have ibak nebuisha, which is, that is not a helmet. You could say ibak nubuisha if you wanted to. There's also something else you can say, which works perfectly fine in Mandoa, but sounds weird in English. You could put the negative on that. So, for example, nebak buisha would mean not that is a helmet, which sounds weird in English, but it's fine in Mandoa because it means not that is a helmet, but something else is. So when you're talking about this, this is not a helmet, but that is. Tion is the interrogative prefix, and it usually goes at the beginning of the sentence, and it can be combined with other words to make specific question words, or it can be used separately to ask if the sentence is true or false. So I have three examples here. Tion Gargai means what's your name, literally your name, question. Tion Ad is an example of a combined word, Tion Ad, which literally means which person, but we use it as who. Tion Ad is who. And you can also say a fact and put Tion before it as a question to see if that fact is true or not. So for example, Gargai Getal. Your name is Gital. If you put Tion before it, you're asking, is your name Gital? And then they can answer. Those are some of the basic prefixes. I'm sure there's more, but we're not covering them right now.